Holy. So it's getting late in the day, but I really wanted to film the intro today because tomorrow is spray day. So this will be the last time you see the boat like this. So I really wanted to get this intro done today, get one last look at the hull as it is now, because after tomorrow morning, this old hull is gonna be all white. As well as working flat out on this boat, I've still been able to get out and dive every now and then. We managed to get out a few weeks ago. I was just gonna go for a shore dive, throw all the gear in the back of the ute, head down, hit all the headlands. I found out that a mate of mine was heading out. I got straight back to him and said, yep, I'm coming. Jumped in his 773 and we headed out to the islands. It was a bit of a slow start to the day. I let a really good finger mark go, hoping that the school would come back and they just they just never came back. Managed to find a really good tusky and a few trout. So we'll go check out that dive footage now and then we'll come back into the shed and go over what I've been up to with this project boat. I haven't done an intro like this for a little while. Super calm today, really small tides. I'll load this car up and get down to the ramp so they're not waiting too long for me. We'll see how we go. Right, eh? see you on the water. Welcome back underwater. So this is an island just straight out off Mackay. It's about probably half hour trip, something like that. Make my way down to the bottom here. This spot is known to hold good finger mark. So it was no surprise to see the school swim up to me here. I picked out what I thought was the bigger fish. It never really gave me a decent shot. It just sort of sat there looking at me and then the whole school spooked. I did another like 10 to 15 dives in this sort of general area and I did not see the school again so I had one opportunity and I missed it. Now this next spot I have dived before about four years ago. I shot my first Spanish from this same area and on that day I couldn't actually see the rocks. There was a heap of current and it was a lot dirtier than what it was today. So this day was a bit cleaner, could see the rocks, so I swam down. Did a few dives looking for Spanish, hoping that something would come in. It was just alive with small fish, small bait, little trevally. Very short dive. Still had heaps left in the tank and saw this good tusky just as I left the rock. I definitely don't advocate this. If you're heading for the surface, especially at the back end of a long dive, don't turn around and go back. That was a super short dive for me. I was only down there for about 30 seconds. So I put a good shot on this fish, put the brakes on him and get him up. So location change, there was a heap of run at this spot. There would have been about sort of 10 to 12 meters. I had my dive watch on, but the battery decided to pack it in on the way out. Not having my dive watch working properly actually played on my mind a fair bit on this day. It definitely made my dives not feel anywhere near as comfortable as what they normally are. I didn't know my surface intervals. I didn't know how deep I was going. I had the time on my watch, so I was able to sort of work out my own intervals. And I've got a pretty good idea of depth, but still it just played in my mind and, and it definitely messed with my diving on this day. A location change, completely different island. You can see I can't see the bottom here at all. So I was just sort of diving down. I was out off the island, trying to find isolated bombies and find the fish. So as I'm getting down to the bottom here, I'm sort of scanning around, looking for any structure. I see a nice bommie over there, and that was my main focus, and this good trout just sort of cruises in from my right. By this time in the day, I was a lot more comfortable with my diving. You can see how much more relaxed I am here. I start swimming up, grab the fish. It's another quality trout off the Mackay Coast. For a day where I was going to jump in the car and do a bit of shore diving, it was really good to get out, dive a few islands, dive a few spots, dive an old spot that I haven't dived in ages, and we got out and landed some quality fish. So I hope you enjoyed that day's diving. Back in the shed now. So the project boat is the other way around. It's backed up how it should be now. So the bottom of the hull is complete up to the gunnels. What I did was I filmed that whole process, every single step, and I plan to make longer format video just on that, just on the re coating of this entire hull. So I filmed all the prep for the top deck. I've, I've filmed everything. In these sort of like combination videos with my spearing and the boat updates, I'm not gonna put all that information in these videos. What I will do is I will have longer format videos just on the boat but my main focus now is to get as much footage as I can while I'm doing this and obviously finish this boat get it on the water and get it out and use the bloody thing so let's go check out what steps it took and how long it took to get it from upside down unsprayed to spraying the bottom flip back over and now we're prepped ready to spray tomorrow so here we are spray booth or makeshift spray booth is made the bottom of the hull is all prepped ready to spray so you see a ventilation fan there, so I made a scrubber box, put three sprays on it. So all the fumes and everything get wet down and doesn't annoy the neighbours. So 
So on this particular day, we sprayed four coats, three unwaxed, one waxed at the very end. I started sanding the following day and I sanded through on a few spots. So I made the call to sand the whole boat back flat and go through the whole process of gel coating again. It's probably the process that I should have done anyway. The hull was in such a bad condition. It had that many little nicks and knocks and stuff in it. So that first sort of gel coating really filled all them up. So then the sanding started. Gel coat doesn't lay completely flat. You've got to sand it to a nice finish. That's down to 1500 grit there. And after two days of sanding between dad and myself, we were able to buff it up and get this result. Holy. That's amazing. Can I touch it? How is this even the same boat? Holy. Looks awesome. So we went through this scary task of flipping the hole back over. We are very careful not to damage anything. It actually went pretty well, but I think the shed's done for um, flipping boats. It was creaking and graining a little bit this time. So onto the sanding and prepping of the top deck. So fairing compound in, sand, fairing in, sand. Sort of followed that process backwards and forwards for the last week or so. Now I had to make a couple of pads for the nose of the boat. So one for the anchor winch and one for the bowsprit. The nose of the boat's curved a heap and obviously you can't just bolt it straight down onto the curve. So I opted to actually build it up on the boat itself and I got a pretty good result. I reckon I had to build it up about 12 to 15 mil in some spots and that was just all hand laid glass and it came up pretty neat. So more fairing, more sanding over the next few days. You think you've got everything and then you start sanding again, start wandering around the boat, having a bit of a look around and you find some more spots. You've got to fill them, you've got to sand them. Heaps of vacuuming. Vacuuming's good because obviously it helps keep everything clean. But as well as that, it gives you a chance to have a good look at the boat. So it's just another step. Same with acetone wiping, same with everything. As you're doing all that, you can have a good look at the boat, have a good think about it. You can find other spots, things that you've missed. You can put a little bit more fill in. And doing those extra little fill sessions, spending the time, keeping it clean, doing all that sort of stuff, definitely plays a big part in that final result. Thanks so much for watching that episode, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe. Leave a comment if you want to know anything more about the boat, anything about my diving. Give the video a like it does actually help it helps the algorithm it helps me out it helps the channel grow and as the channel grows you'll see more of this stuff you'll see more of my content and you'll see it all happening so again thanks heaps for watching guys and i'll catch you on the next episode cheers